Okay, we're back doing some physics problem solving uh, all about energy. And I wanted to do an example of potential energy with springs. So uh, let's think about a common everyday toy, uh, in this case a Nerf dart gun. Now dart guns are powered by springs and the springs either push directly on the dart itself or they push on a plunger that uh, generates air that sends out the darts and this is certainly the way that these Nerf dart guns work. Okay, So this is the N-Strike Maverick, that's uh, probably the finest dart gun ever made by Nerf and let's imagine doing a problem uh, about this dart gun. So suppose the spring in the Maverick has a spring constant of 9.7 newtons per meter. Um, it shoots 25 gram darts and those darts emerge with a speed of 1.5 meters per second. And what I want to know is what is the compress compression distance of the spring when the dart gun is loaded. Now, um, this is the kind of problem that you would encounter if you were trying to design the gun. What you would typically say is, I want to ensure that my projectile emerges with such and such a speed. I went down to the hardware store and I bought a spring with this spring constant. And so, how far do I need to compress the, uh, uh, the spring in order to make the dart emerge with the speed that we want it to emerge with? So this is basically a, uh, a toy designer's problem. So if you get a degree in physics, you can go design toys. So the way we're going to do this problem um, is we're going to write down all the initial and final energies in the problem and then we're going to conserve energy between the uh, time the dart emerges from the gun and the time the dart uh, is compressed um, and then we'll solve for the compression of the spring when we're done. Okay, so let's talk about the energies. So there are basically two states in the problem. One state is when the spring has completely uncompressed and the dart is traveling outward from the gun with some speed v. Okay, so that is our final state. And our initial state is going to be with the spring completely compressed and the dart not moving. The dart has a speed v equal to zero. So the importance of distinguishing these two states is this is what is ultimately going to allow us to conserve energy. Because we've chosen states where it's very easy to completely identify all the energy as being either kinetic energy or being uh, totally potential energy. So in our initial state, the dart's not moving. So automatically we know that the kinetic energy is equal to zero and the spring is compressed. So all of the energy in the problem is stored in that compressed spring. And we know that the energy, the potential energy of a spring is a half times K times the compression squared, where this x is the amount that the spring has been compressed from its equilibrium length. Now in the final state, there is no potential energy. The spring has completely expanded at this point, it is no longer compressed, and so there is no potential energy in this part of the problem. Instead, all of the energy is kinetic energy, and that's equal to a half times m times the speed of the dart squared. Okay? So, now we can use the initial and the final state and we can conserve energy. We can say that the energy at the end of the problem is equal to the energy at the start of the problem. There's no dissipation in this problem. There's no forces sucking energy out of the problem. There's no forces acting from the outside adding energy into the problem. And so the final energy is equal to the initial energy. And if I be completely explicit, that means the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy is equal to the initial kinetic energy plus the initial potential energy. And as we noted up here in our problem uh, setup, we have a situation where in 
each of these two states, one of the uh, contributions to the total energy is zero. In our initial state, the initial kinetic energy is zero. And in our final state, the final potential energy is zero. And so if I make those substitutions, I find that my final kinetic energy is equal to my initial potential energy, or a half m v squared is equal to a half k x squared. Okay. Now at this point, I could put some numbers in if I wanted to, but I can solve algebraically for what I'm asked to find. And what we're asked to find is, what is the compression of the spring at the moment before the dart is launched? And that is this x here, so I can do a little bit of algebra. The halves cancel out on both sides, so I get x squared is equal to the mass of the dart divided by the spring constant times v squared, and if I take the square root of both sides, I get that x is equal to the final uh, speed v times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant k. So that is the algebraic expression for the compression of the spring. Now it's very useful to do things algebraically because at this point you could uh, try many different parameters. If you were doing this in a laboratory, you might have several different springs you wanted to work with. You might have several different darts you wanted to work with. Maybe you're trying to get different speeds. And if you'd solve the problem algebraically, you can do it just once and just plug in new numbers for each of the different physical situations that you might consider. In this case, we're told the parameters of interest. So the compression of the spring is given by the numbers that we're told. The initial speed is 1.5 meters per second. The mass of the dart is 25 grams, which is 0 0.025 kilograms. And the spring constant, we're told, is 9.7 newtons per meter. You'll notice I've done everything completely in SI units here, in kilograms, meters, and seconds. And that's all to the one-half power. And so if I punch those into the calculator, I get that the compression of the spring is 0 0.076 meters. And that is 7.6 centimeters. Okay, and I can imagine uh, trying to understand whether or not that number is correct. It looks approximately correct to me because I know that 7.6 centimeters is a scale compatible with the size of the dart gun that I was talking about. So I can look at this number and at least uh, have some sense that I did the calculation correctly. Okay, so that's an example of using conservation of energy with springs. Good luck doing some of these on your own, and we'll talk again next time.